Hello there. I've got two nice chord games for you. The first one is easier than the second. I'll start with the easy one first. The idea is that you chromatically go through all of the keys and you allow any chord type to drop into your mind. The test is, can you play that chord type, which you have spontaneously thought about, in the key that you happen to be in? So uh, let me just give you an example. So let's just say uh, major seven, half, uh, half diminished, um, minor seven, sus four, minor six, whole diminished. See, so I'm saying the chord that I have to play in the next key that I arrive uh, at. That's uh, a good challenge because it's gonna you're gonna find weaknesses in your chord uh, theory. I'll spend a bit more time now on the second exercise, which is a bit more complicated because it involves extensions and fancy chords. So it's a good opportunity to practice those. I'll tell you now that the most in, the most common extension is the nine. So lots of these will involve nines. The idea is that you take any note that you want up here. Um, I'll take a B flat. That's uh, that looks good. And you start on C, or you even start on B flat actually, and you play um, any chord where uh, the B flat is the top note. Now in the B flat, it's going to be the octave, of course, because it's just the one, the root. So it will put any chord type. But you're, the, the trick of this, the hard part, the challenge, is to fill in any space as you're working up through the keys um, with other notes of interest. So you're going to think about nines, elevens, sharp elevens, thirteens, flat, you know, augmented, sus four all these different chord types and see if you can create a chord where the top note never changes. So B flat, let's just uh, start with a simple major seven shape because that's of course in the key. But there's some space here so we can fill it in with some other interesting notes. This is where the theory comes in. So a nine basically works everywhere. And then you think, okay, there's still quite a big space here. What else works with a major seven and a nine? Well, a sharp 11 is nice with a major seven chord. So that would be E, eight, nine, 10, 11 sharp so let's put that as well now the b flat isn't very melodic but it's still a, a safe note because it's in the key of the chord you could even put the 13 in here the g and take it that far so the first one does sound a little bit odd but it's going to sound a bit nicer as we close the space here so that's the first one anyway you've forced yourself to fill in that space where the b flat is the top note but the first one is always going to be a little bit bland because it's just the octave now moving up to b that's going to be an A sharp in the key of B rather than a B flat, of course. So what chord we have to use is a, is a major seven chord type, but there's other major sevens. You don't just play major seven. You could play a minor with a major seven. Maybe you didn't know that. So we could play a minor, major seven, and of course we could put a nine in, which would be a C sharp, and uh, maybe a 13, which would be a G sharp. That would probably sound quite nice. Like a 13, like a minor major 13 um minor major yeah major major implies the major seven so minor major 13 with the nine implied it's very complicated but it forces you to find note values doesn't sound too bad you could even double up on the fifth if you wanted to double up on the third if you want to and play all the black notes because they're all in the key of uh, B. But the fact is the top note, A sharp, never changes. Let's go to C now. B flat is what? This is a note value awareness uh, exercise as well, I forgot to say in the beginning. That's a dominant seven. So on C, so it's gonna be some chord type with a, with a dominant seven on top. So what could we use here? We could use a sus four. We could even use a half diminished. And I'll do the sus four because I said it first. So we'll raise the E to the F. We could put a nine with that again. Um, We'll just keep the five, double up on the five, and keep the B flat on top. So that sounds quite nice. A C9 sus. The dominant seven is implied when you say an, an extension. Nine, eleven, thirteen, da, da, da. Um, So that's quite a nice one. Moving up to C sharp or D flat, meaning A sharp or B flat. That's the sixth. And uh, so that, that could also be considered the thirteen. So let's play a thirteen chord with a nine. 13 chord means you put the dominant 7 part on the bottom. Of course, there's other ways to play it, but basically, dominant 7 type on the bottom. We could put a 13 in here. Sorry, the 9. The 13 is on top. And the sharp 11 would be quite nice, actually, which would be a G, because 8, 9, 10, 11, sharp. Why? How do I know that? Because the sharp 11 prefers major third based triad chords. If it was a minor, well, maybe I'll do that. Um, in fact, I can do that on F when we get to it because B flat is going to be the 11th of F. So I'll play an F minor. I can see ahead already. Not because I planned it, because I just know that. So D flat 13. 
can play the seven down here. We can put a nine in here. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. Sharpen it to the G. Make it the thirteen on top. It's quite a nice sound there. So that would be cool. C sharp or D flat. Um, thirteen sharp eleven. Uh, the nine is normally implied when you when you talk about elevens and thirteens. Very nice sound. And you can see that there's a quite a nice way. Of, this, is, this enters the, the world of upper chord structures. Uh, in other words, if you look here, I'm just playing an E flat major triad based on the second of the key I'm playing the dominant seven in. So it's a very quick way of playing a 13 sharp 11 chord. We'll have a video on the chord extensions, upper chord structures, and chord extensions. So D, this note is going to be probably the sharp five. So an A sharp, we could consider that. So with sharp five, an augmented chord. That will give us the top note. So let's just simply play a D uh, augmented twice. It's one of my favorite chord types because it's very symmetrical when you play it alone with the D, with the octave, and the sharp five and the third. It's a very nice shape to play. Um, so that's, that's, that's that one. Very, very nice. Uh, e flat, it's going to be the fifth. B flat is the fifth of E flat, so we could put anything here. Um, what haven't we done yet? Let's do uh, let's just do a normal, a regular nine chord. E flat seven, F is the nine. We'll just put the B flat the five on top. The five is a very safe note, so it sounds very nice. Of course, we can add notes on top, but the exercise is that you keep the top note, top note the same. So that's a five. Uh, moving to E. Um, that would force us to play a flat five, so we could get the half diminished in this one. Minor, flat five, regular seven. That sounds quite nice. Uh, I'd just like to show another one here because it's um, it forces me to think about something. Um, here, this A is the fourth or the eleventh. If we sharpen the eleven, it would be called a sharp eleven, not a flat five, because I can put the five here which would force the naming of this to be a sharp 11 because a note can't be in two places at the same time it can't be a 5 flat 5 it doesn't make sense it can't be a flat 5 chord with a 5 in it so that has to be the sharp 11 one's 8, eight 9, 10, 11 sharpened so let's put a 9 in there as well the F sharp that sounds very nice There's a little example there on not uh, on realising that one note has to be named in two different ways it can't be in two different places at the same time it can't be flat 5 because the 5 is here so it has to be sharp 11 from the other side that's that logic now this F one with the 11 B flat is the 11 or the 4 you don't normally say 4 in, in chord naming unless it's a suspended 4 sus 4 uh, so let's play F minor put a 9 in it of course and the 11 on top lovely sound hope you'll agree Moving to F sharp or G flat, that's going to be the third, so not, not a lot we can do with that, but let's just play a chord that has, has to have a third in it. Uh, maybe a six chord, a six nine chord. F sharp or G flat six, uh, eight nine, here's the nine, and the third on top. It's quite a nice sound. I hope you agree with that. Now moving to G, it's going to be the minor, we have no choice. Or it could be the sharp nine actually, so we could play a G7. And consider that as an A sharp, a sharp nine. A bluesy sound. Or it could be a minor chord. So we have to play a minor. Uh, we could put a diminished in there, maybe a, uh, a whole diminished. We could play a G whole diminished. Like that, an easy one. Moving to A flat, it's going to be the second. You don't normally say second, you say nine. So let's do a chord with a nine. What have we done? Minor nine. So let's do an A flat minor uh, with a regular seven, A flat minor seven the nine on top moving to a it has to be the flat nine so let's do you don't play a flat nine with a minor so it has to be a major third chord type um, so let's do a regular seven and that's going to force us to play an a7 flat nine this sounds quite nice uh, you can normally raise the five actually on these so let's just call that a augmented flat nine or a flat nine augmented because there's a lot of tension in there. It wants to resolve up a fourth. So A would resolve onto a D chord. A, this type of chord, augmented flat nine, would land on a D. Like that. Here I'm playing D minor seven with a nine and an 11. Uh, anyway, uh, so that's... And then we're back to B flat again. So there we go. We're back to B flat. Let's play a different chord type just to close. Let's play a B minor... With a regular five and a set. Let's just do the. Let's just, there we go. Let's just, let's just build up that chord like this. Here I'm playing B flat minor seven with a nine. There's the eleven. 
that's it, and the doubling up on the five, so B flat minor 11. That works quite nicely. Um, so there you go, that is the idea. Now if you could write those down as an exercise, and then try to play them off immediately, um, that would be, you know, quite fun. So of course your, your homework, your exercise, your personalization exercise, is to take any note, I've just demonstrated with B flat, and try to do that as quickly as you can, um, and even if you can, try and make it a bit more stylish, play it in different places, maybe put a rhythm to it, and you can get some really interesting, nice chord progressions going up. So hopefully that exercise is going to be of use to you. As always, likes, comments, subscriptions are always welcome. Have a look at my video management website, Water Penis and Syllabus, perhaps Patreon, and all my playlists, and I'll see you in the next video. All the best, and bye for now.